Okay, this illustration from your textbook uh, shows the circulation, fetal circulation, um, what's going on before you're born. Uh, important to remember that blood is supplied to the placenta by vessels called umbilical arteries. They were, uh, earlier we, we called them allantoic arteries, went to the allantois. The allantois eventually becomes partly the bladder. So anyway, these vessels come out, go to the umbilical cord, here's the umbilical cord, reaching out to the placental region of the mother. Now that blood is going to be returned, come back through the umbilical vein, and uh, remember early on we showed that it goes into the back side of the heart. Well, at this stage in the fetal circulation, that blood is routed partly into the liver where it joins with deoxygenated blood from the hepatic portal vessels here. And part of that bypasses that liver circulation and goes through what's called a ductus spinosus. There. So uh, deoxygenated blood from the fetal circulation goes out to the placenta, gets oxygen, and then comes back into the body here. Um, This blood, whether it goes through the hepatic portal system or through this ductus spinosus, either way it ends up in the vena cava right here, going back into the heart at the right atrium, joins with superior vena cava blood. Much of that blood is going to be pushed over to the uh, left atrium through the oval foramen, that little gap that's in there, and that blood is eventually going to go into the aorta. Some of that blood, a small portion of it, is going to be sent to the lungs. Now, the lungs are not active at this point, so you don't need to send very much blood out there to the lung. Uh, it's not getting your oxygen for you. All your oxygen is coming from placental blood. So some of that blood that doesn't go over to the left atrium goes down to the right ventricle here, and it is pumped up through the pulmonary trunk. And remember, the pulmonary trunk comes from arch number six and part of that arch number six becomes that um, ductus arteriosus that bridges between pulmonary and aortic circulation so the aorta is getting some blood from the uh, pulmonary trunk and that blood then is all circulated out into the body along the aorta here so in this illustration they try to show varying degrees of oxygenation of the blood. The most highly oxygenated blood would be coming from the placenta at this stage. And it's going to be mixed with deoxygenated blood through all these routes. So you end up with a mixed blood that goes out to the aorta and a mixed blood that goes out to the placenta to get more oxygen again. That blood that's been to the, the legs and other organs of the body and so forth comes back after the oxygen has been pulled from it to give oxygen to those developing tissues and comes back either through the portal system, the hepatic portal vein, or through the vena cava through here. So that portal blood and vena cava blood is mixed with umbilical vein blood high in oxygen on its way up to the heart. So low oxygen blood in blue, high oxygen blood in red, and where it mixes, they try to show uh, some shade of a purple in between there. Now I've removed most of the uh, labels that are on, were on the uh, original picture here. Uh, we still have placenta label down here, our, our uh, lower limbs down here. These are internal and external iliac arteries and internal and external iliac veins. Uh, so these goes to the pelvic region, into the legs, and then blood coming back through the blue uh, vessels here into the vena cava. We want to look specifically now at where that mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood will occur. First of all, oxygenated blood, the oxygenated, totally oxygenated blood coming from the placenta here, is routed in two different directions and mixes with uh, deoxygenated blood in these two places. So the first place here is where the umbilical vein meets the hepatic portal vein. That's point number one. 
umbilical vein and hepatic portal vein. The second place where you see that mixing is between the uh, ductus venosus, this little extension of the umbilical vein here, and the inferior vena cava. So the ductus venosus and inferior vena cava location is the second place where you see mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. The next place you see things mix is once you get up to the heart in the right atrial chamber. The right atrium is the third location where you have the inferior vena cava blood, which is a little bit higher in oxygen than superior vena cava blood, mixing here. The next place you see mixing is between the right atrium and the left atrium through the oval foramen. The blood that's coming to the left atrium is coming from the lungs, the pulmonary veins, so that's deoxygenated blood, and that partly oxygenated blood is added to that over on that side. To go to the uh, left atrium, from the left atrium it goes to the left ventricle and then is pumped out the aorta. It's the primary blood supply that's giving the tissues blood that's as much oxygenated as it can get at that stage. There is a hemoglobin in uh, the fetal stage called fetal hemoglobin that has a higher affinity for oxygen than maternal blood or adult blood would have, so it can rob uh, oxygen from the tissues more quickly and therefore it has a higher oxygen content than normal circulating blood. The final place where you see mixing between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is between that blood from the uh, right ventricle that's pumped up the pulmonary trunk and then it mixes in at the aorta up there. And that connection is called the ductus arteriosus. Ductus arteriosus. So five locations where we see mixing of blood that doesn't happen uh, in normal situations after you're born. The first one was right here where the umbilical vein and the hepatic portal vein meet. The next one was where you see this extension of the hepatic portal or the uh, umbilical vein called the ductus venosus meets the posterior vena cava here behind the liver. The third location was in the right atrium. The fourth location was in the left atrium where that right atrial blood gets pushed through the oval foramen there, so the oval foramen connection. And then the next last location was between the uh, pulmonary artery and the aorta, that ductus arteriosus. There's five locations where you see this mixing of blood before birth that doesn't happen after you're born. Now here's the circulation for the baby after it's born. Uh, things have changed quite a bit. There's no blood coming from the placenta any longer. Placental blood is gone. Um, so that vessel that was in there is going to just be left as a remnant of tissue. We're going to refer to as a ligament. The arteries that sent blood to the umbilical uh, cord no longer used either. So that's going to be nothing but a remnant, a ligament of tissue, a small ligament of tissue, uh, somewhere between the bladder and the uh, belly button right there. The mixing of blood that we saw before in the liver, in the hepatic portal vein, and in the vena cava behind the liver, that no longer occurs. All this blood is deoxygenated. It's been out to the body. It's coming back to the heart uh, to be sent to the lungs. So. We don't see any kind of mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated. It's all deoxygenated here. It's going to be sent to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. So the pulmonary arteries carry the blood to the lungs. That old uh, connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta, the ductus arteriosus, is no longer there. It's going to become a ligament as well, a ligamentum arteriosum. So the blood goes to the lungs, gets oxygenated, comes back as well oxygenated blood there on the left side, the left atrial chamber. That left atrial blood then is pushed down into the ventricle and then out the aorta. That's normal circulation. That's the way we studied adult circulation to begin with. 
So that goes out to the body, gets oxygen uh, to the tissues, and then those tissues return blood that is low on oxygen, and around you go again. Now we want to turn our attention to uh, the names of these connections that are no longer used, these ligaments and structures that are closed off that were important to the circulation before birth. Okay, remember that our, our supply, our umbilical supply, arterial supply, the blood going out to the placenta was originally an outgrowth of the internal iliac arteries shown here. That uh, blood supply is closed off now. There's no need to send it out here. So that's just a, a, a remnant we call the medial umbilical ligament. Medial umbilical ligament. Comes right up to the connection of the umbilical cord, the, the belly button location there. Next, that connection of the umbilical vein up in here to the liver where it joins with the uh, hepatic portal vein structures. That's referred to as the ligamentum teres. Ligamentum teres. That segment that was the ductus venosus, kind of a bypass route to the posterior vena cava across here, now referred to as a ligamentum venosum. Ligamentum venosum. So we have those closures, the umbilical arteries close, the umbilical vein, and uh, ductus venosus close off as well. Next thing that closes is that oval foramen between the right atrium and left atrium. It's closed up, so we have a, the valve closed and a cl complete separation now of our two atrial chambers. The only other location that we have closed up now is where we've sent blood from the pulmonary artery to the aorta before. The ductus arteriosus now closed. We call it the ligamentum arteriosum. Ligamentum arteriosum. So, how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, places of closure there. The uh, umbilical arteries become medial umbilical ligaments. The umbilical vein in this segment right here becomes ligamentum teres. That connection that was called ductus venosus is called ligamentum venosum now. The uh, oval foramen that allowed things to move through is closed. It's not a ligament, it's just the uh, uh, closed oval foramen. And then finally, the ductus arteriosus becomes ligamentum arteriosum. 